Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father Francis here again on the second Sunday in Lent. Today we encounter uh, covenants, converts, and clouds. So, how is your Lent going, my friend, this uh, second Sunday? You know, Lent uh, <clears throat> kind of really picks up speed real fast. And before you know it, you know, you're almost done with it, you know. And, um, you know, it's sometimes it, it's kind of like one of those hit and uh, kind of like a drive-by uh, liturgical season. Uh, because just as you're kind of getting into it, sort of like Advent, it's almost over. And so, you know, it's really important that, you know, you really kind of allow yourself time uh, to really focus on the readings from Sundays that we share at Mass. Uh, maybe take them home and, and use that as a focal point during the week. Um, maybe, you know, do some extra reading, uh, spiritual reading. There are a lot of really good books out there that on the faith. A lot of good tapes. Well, I should say tapes. <laughs> CDs. Podcasts now. Now podcasts. I'm sure there's a lot of good Catholic podcasts out there. Uh, in some ways, this is, it was an original attempt to be a podcast, but I think a podcast is a little bit more of an audio uh, presentation than just a video, so mine's more of a YouTube presentation. But again, there are a lot of good, uh, good, lot of good spiritual resources out there for those who are really desiring to grow in the faith during Lent. So, we see in our first reading today, you know, uh, Abraham making a covenant with God. And it's amazing because God chooses to covenant with us. You know, a lot of times people kind of think, well, I need to basically, before, if I ever decide to get right with God, you know, I need to do a lot of stuff. I gotta need to clean up my act. And there's a lot of truth to that for all of us. But isn't it amazing that God really condescends time after time to uh, have a relationship with us. He desires to have a relationship with us. And that's what covenant is all about. A lot of times people look at covenant as a legal binding contract, and, a, and that's not really what a covenant is. In a contract, you would kind of exchange property or things. You know, I will agree to pay you so much for that thing, and then that thing it becomes, it comes into my possession. I have to take ownership of that thing. But a covenant is, is more like a marriage. In fact, it is a marriage. You know, you're not, you know, basically buying a wife or a husband when you get married. Uh, you are become, you're entering into a marriage. And in a marriage, you're not trying to get something. You're trying to give of yourself. So it, the difference between covenants and contracts is simply this. One's dealing with things and the other is dealing with people. And so God wants to covenant with us. He wants to be our God. And he wants us to be his people. Now when we read in the second reading, St. Paul is talking to his converts in Philippi. So here St. Paul is, uh, is uh, basically uh, ministering to these, these converts now. And he loves them. You know, he has a real fatherly relationship with them. He, he uh, is concerned about their spiritual welfare. And so, uh, like any good father, good spiritual father, he has to sometimes, you know, uh, encourage them, but sometimes he has to admonish them. Uh, I think he does that more certainly with the Corinthians than he does with any other group. But, uh, but he does have to give sometimes, you know, a little admonitions, even exhortations, uh, so that people can see where they're kind of going a little bit astray, so they don't father, so they don't wander too far from the faith. But being a convert, converting, let me tell you something. Being a convert, if you've never been a convert to something, you're missing out. You know, uh, I really think that that's the truth because I <laughs> certainly I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a convert to the Christian faith. But um, as about three years ago, this this month, and well, I'm making this, I'm making these uh, videos a little early. Uh, in February, I became a Mac person. Yeah, you're probably realizing that. But if you watch these videos or you watch my YouTube channel, you know that I, from time to time, do little uh, product reviews on Apple products. And I have to tell you that I am a Mac convert. I love the Macintosh 
computer. And um, not to say that, you know, I hate uh, Windows, but uh, let's just say that I have had, uh, for the most part, you know, I'd say 95% uh, success or satisfaction rate with being a Mac person. And uh, that came about as a result of somebody giving me uh, as a gift, a very, very magnanimous gift, I must add, say, a uh, gift of a new iMac. And I'll tell you what, it was a wonderful experience. And there's some frustration learning going from Windows to, to the Macintosh uh, OS X platform of, uh, you know, uh, computing. But once I've done that, I, you know, certainly I, I have kind of really left most of the Windows things in the past because I just don't need those programs anymore. But uh, so I was a convert, and that was exciting, you know. But it wasn't nearly as exciting as when I became a Christian, when I became a Catholic Christian, you know. And maybe sometime, you can actually go back uh, to last year, I think I shared a little bit of my testimony about my conversion to the Catholic faith in one of my uh, videos from, uh, from Lent or Easter of last year. So I won't go into that now. And then finally, this mysterious cloud. And we kind of see a cloud also in the first reading, you know, Abraham is going into this deep sleep and, you know, all these, uh, this mist and this, uh, the, the smoke uh, basically comes up, you know, because it's God. God's holy presence is now passing through these pieces of uh, these offerings. But now we see God, uh, we see the cloud again appear on the, on the transfiguration. Our Lord goes, he takes some of his very intimate disciples with him, and they go up to this mountain, and he reveals his true self to them. Uh, all of his glory is manifested, and then Elijah and Moses come, and they now enter into this conversation with Jesus. And what happens is basically we see you know, the, uh, the father of the new covenant with Moses, and of course now the prophets. So the patriarchs and the prophets uh, are now, you know, going, coming together. You know, it's almost like this, this, these great uh, theological puzzle pieces are now coming into play. And Jesus now is going to take the old covenant and he's going to take the old prophecies and he's going to now fulfill and ratify and make something completely brand new for all of us. And so that's what we encounter in our readings of this second Sunday of Lent. You know, we are encouraged to enter into the mysteries that we celebrate in a more personal and real way. We're called to be, have a conversion of heart and we are called to enter into a loving covenant with our God. Well, I hope you got something out of that today on this second Sunday Lent. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.